same Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, a spirit of fortitude, so that, taught by the glorious example of your martyr, Saint Sebastian, we may learn to obey you rather than men. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem and priest of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. The, and Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king. And he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so, and not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, 
You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power, the Lord, will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath? rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it. But they remained silent, looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart. Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. There are days when it's oh, just so awesome that we are fed in the liturgy, and today is one of those days where you're just looking, and you're like, oh, I'm like, we have an amazing first reading, an amazing gospel, and we have two saints, not just one. Oh, my goodness. We could just, like, think about holy things all day long. Um, just a little thought, just a couple little thoughts here. Like on the gospel, the man is in the synagogue with the withered hand, which we have to like think with our Jewish mindset. That means the people are not good Jewish people because they shouldn't have let him into the synagogue with the withered hand. They're making the whole synagogue prayer uh, unclean, ritually unclean. It's nothing to do with sin. It has everything to do with the ritual. And therefore, they're already being bad. And then they're going to look and say, Jesus, are you going to do the wrong thing? Are you gonna... You're not even obeying your own rules, people. Come on, get up with the pro But And this is why, and this is so important for us, we can see that our Lord responds with anger. He gets angry when people do bad things, mocking his father. Remember another time where it says he gets angry is when he's in the temple and they are turning the temple, the place where you worship God, into a marketplace. Our Lord responds with anger when God is mocked. And we need to keep this in mind. So, one little thought. Another little thought about our first reading about oh, the um, 
idea of tithing, giving to God a tenth. Oh, mm, some, okay, anyway, moving on. Another thought we have is today's saints. We could talk about St. Fabian, the Pope, who's awesome, but we're going to talk about St. Sebastian, who is also awesome. Oh, what an amazing life. Not only did he get to be a martyr, we, in our opening uh, antiphon, we kind of mentioned how he gave his life. He got to be a martyr twice. Oh, oh, oh. I mean... You can't get to be any better than that. So, he's a soldier in the Roman Empire, and this is during the time of Diocletian, when it's illegal to be Christian. And he's a soldier, and he goes about doing good, but he does it like without anybody knowing he's a Christian. But then, one day, there's some Christians who are being persecuted, and they're going to give up the faith, and they're going to just, like, no. And he says, no, 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 let me step forward and reveal. I'm a Christian, and these guys, you can't be making fun of them. Don't persecute them because they're Christians. Being Christian is the right thing to do. Look at the miracles. Look at the truth. This is the real religion. Oh, and so, because he's, like, bringing people away from paganism, the, the rule is, like, well, you know, no Christians are allowed. If you're a Christian, you need to die. So they decide to, his soldiers, they string him up to a tree, and they shoot him with arrows, leaving him for dead. Martyrdom number one. But St. Irene comes and finds him and says, let me do what a Christian woman should do when she encounters this. And so she says, you know, Maybe he's dead. He needs, let's wash the body and bury him because it, burying the dead is one of our corporal works of mercy, right? And praying for the dead, burying the dead. But as she's wiping and washing his body, she realizes oh, he hasn't died yet. He's still alive. And so she nurses him back to health. And when he comes to his full strength, St. Sebastian doesn't say, oh, I just skipped death. I'm so lucky. Let me like live in hiding. No, he goes back and he continues to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Continues to say, we need to stop being pagans. We need to be real Christians. And then they clubbed him to death. So he got to be a martyr twice. Just a little thought for all of us, especially maybe our adults who are here. From the perspective, not of St. Sebastian, but of St. Irene. She looked out And she saw what looked to be the lifeless corpse. And she went and did what was right. And perhaps today some of us are looking out and we're seeing what looks to be a lifeless corpse. And we might be tempted to discouragement. Tempted. The persecution is too hard. It's what difference does it make? But that was not the response of Irene who went and did the right thing, who did not give in to discouragement, but persevered in works of mercy, in growing in holiness. It is always the right time to do the right thing, even if it seems like it's not going to make a difference. And through her ministry, we can see a beautiful saint was able to emerge victorious over death and to give witness by the way he lived his life. How many Irenes are in the church today whom God is calling you to continue to persevere in good works so that more Saint Sebastians can give witness to the faith. Today we offer this mass for the repose of the soul of Kenneth Carr. Benedictus est domus Dei universi qui de tu logitate, chipimus panum quinte de fertimus fructus terde dobitis monum homnum ex canabis fit panis vitae. Benedictus Deus in secula. Per cui es sacra dei meus et determina dignitatis consortis qui in qualitate et non servire in dignitate. Es partis. Sacrifice in yours may be accepted. 
his holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with that flame of your love through which St. Sebastian overcame every bodily torment. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Fabian, Saint Sebastian, Saint Irene, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Sebastian faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. And then just as one little reminder that today being a Wednesday during this year of St. Joseph, if we pray a prayer of your choice, anyone you like, to St. Joseph, we are able to receive the plenary indulgence for such actions, provided that you also go to confession, receive Holy Communion, pray for the intentions of the Pope, and be in a state of grace with no attachment to sin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.